that for you. All right, all right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to a brand new episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. This time around, we are powered by Weapon Wheel Network, officially under the Weapon Wheel umbrella. So that means is if you're watching this uh, fresh up off the upload, you are part of the Weapon Wheel Patreon and Planet Xbox uh, Podcast is now a member of the weapon wheel network so which means first episodes are exclusive to the patreon for a short period of time so just want to get you guys up to uh up to date uh we're we're probably i think i'm at on episode 142 143 but with this new uh you know merger and um you know partnership with the weapon wheel um you know it's a new season this is it's a new beginning but it's, it's still playing xbox and um i've been are you gonna have like a merger and a partnership with your own podcast yeah, well the thing is that uh, yeah i'm a part of planet X, no, 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 i'm a part of weapon wheel podcast i'm a, a member day one member of weapon wheel podcast um i didn't like the consistency um that i have with the podcast and and not having like that energy so um but i obviously i was not going to kill playing xbox podcast and you know the goal is to grow it but the goal is also to get it to a bigger audience and and to pretty much get like new energy into the podcast and um i figured by you know Putting Planet Xbox on a Weapon Wheel platform, on a Weapon Wheel network, it will give me new energy, give me the flexibility uh, to record the podcast and and have a you know a strong panel. So right now is I obviously it's me, the Best Buy Kiss Move, and one of my uh, best friends in uh, the the community, the gaming community, uh, gaming addict, aka Lord Attic. And um, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, what, what's crazy is like I'm an OG Planet Xbox person coming off off, off the uh, the bleachers. <laughs> yes, all, like, but honestly though, I've been wanting to do this. You know, you know, it's crazy. Addict, um, you and I we're we've been friends for a while. We've been doing content creation and all this other stuff for a while, dating back to 2014. I think 2014, 2015. That's that's nine, eight, nine years. My eight. Yeah, about eight, nine years. I would say it's a little bit more than that. Probably about 10, because uh, I think I, I ran into you in 2014, 15. Yeah. So in that. But the thing is, we actually haven't really had a podcast. We have guessed and featured on each other's podcasts. You have a brief stint, obviously, on Planet Xbox and, of course, throughout. You're pretty much an honor, honor, an honorary member of anything I pretty much do. Um, and, and vice versa, but we've actually never had a podcast together, which made uh, no sense. And uh, we tried to make it work with different things and, um, and on different platforms. And I think we we found something. Uh, so uh, thank you for starting this, you know, this new journey, this new version of Planet Xbox. And like I said, at the end of the day, we don't know, you know, how big you know will be. Right now, it's just me and Attic. We'll, of course, we'll have guests and you know and we may you know new members may come in and, and it may be like a you know a bigger you know cast than two but right now we're gonna we're te we're flighting we're flighting uh the new plan xbox podcast on the weapon wheel network and if you want access to the planet um xbox uh podcast on weapon wheel you have to uh be a part of the weapon wheel uh patreon which is um you know a lot of you are already there um this is on the uh uh what's i forget the six dollar tier but it's there uh we got a uh, post for you to ask questions and um we're definitely going to and we're, we'll start the podcast off with the uh patreon questions before we get into the show so um yeah and uh, just a message to the people that are subscribed to my uh uh you know my channel um the, the the podcast isn't locked you know behind a paywall it'll will air the podcast on like uh, on uh on the, it'll go live on you know tuesday but it will go live on the weapon wheel channel bg's channel it's a bigger platform 
um, there if you're not a part of Patreon. But of course, we want you to you know, support us on Patreon. And then for uh, me, my channel, I will still be posting content and even posting highlights of the podcast uh, to the channel. And, and hopefully this gives me room to just do, you know, videos and whatnot. And hopefully the guys that watch Planet Xbox podcast on the Kiss Move channel, you know, convert and come over uh, to Weapon Wheel. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get everybody under uh, one network so we can be, you know, bigger and more and, sh and more will follow. You know, we'll see different people doing different things. Um, you know, it's a lot of members of the Weapon Wheel between you know, Bland, Drew, Black Bond, and, you know, Jack Move. And hopefully this uh, starts out to set the trend. So with that being said, let's get into the show. Uh, Attic, we have some uh, weapon will, uh, we have some questions uh, for these, um, for the first episode. Uh, first one comes from uh, Jack Move Johnny. Um, oh my God. Of course it's Jack Move. Of course, right? Um, shout out to uh, uh, Jack Move. I, I had to prepare myself for this question. He says, you think Uncle Phil, booty do head, Spencer, will ever live up to any of his promises? Or is Jughead forever going to be seen as a liar? I'm gonna let you answer that because I think that's a, a pretty rude uh, question. <laughs> I, think, I think when it comes down to it, CEOs are just going to say what they have to say at the time. That's why you feel like Jim Ryan says some off the wall stuff. Sometimes that's why you see like Phil Spencer say off the wall stuff. Yep. It comes down to it. It's like at that time, that's what their PR states. Yeah. But I, I, I do think, you know, his every three month game thing. I do think we're going to see that now as far as like the quality of games, that's to be remain. I think Phil Spencer does live up to his promises at least uh the the upcoming ones i think uh he sound even though he was angry in that interview he did was kind of funny um he did show like signs of like yo we're finally at the point that they said they were releasing games quarterly and i think that still starts this year so um let's see um we're going to be talking about our predictions and uh later on in the show and I think uh, a lot of our predictions will pretty much determine if we believe Phil Spencer will uh, fulfill any of the, any of the promises that he's made. Um, now I can't go back to like previous ones he's made in like years past, but like moving forward ever since they've been on a an acquisition spree. I mean, if if you really want to get down, he's almost filled every promise he's ever said. True. He said he was going to handle the services. The console, the services, and the game. Now, the games is the one that's that that's iffy. Look, they're producing games. Sure, yeah. some of them are, are games like Redfall, but then some of them are games like Wasteland. You, even even though people don't like Halo Infinite, it still scored like an eighty six on Metacritic. It's yeah. just it was a good game coming out the bat that I think could have improved drastically on a campaign wise, but it didn't hold its own when it come to a games as a service. Now, if you want to judge Halo Infinite as a game as a service, hit that bastard straight down. But as far as like a game, it's lacking in a lot of areas, but it was a fun game to play. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was a... The thing is, is that ever since... I've, I've been happy with, you know, you know, Xbox, you know, ever since the, um, the Xbox Series era. Now, of course, there's, you know uh 2022 is like was a was a was a bummer didn't like and and you know they deserve all the criticism they got but what happened in 2021 what they got you know planned for this year and and beyond um i think we're in a, a much better uh position especially as an xbox gamer as an xbox fan much better position much more things to look forward to um so jack move yes um he will always be seen as a liar to you know playstation fans and uh and, and other pundits out there um the um next but to xbox fans uh he will always have you know a second uh chance and there's always hope second question comes from m um let me see if there's a like because it just says letter m um but it says what would need to happen for you 
for you to demand that Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, Aaron Greenberg, Sarah Bond, and the rest of the Microsoft gaming division leadership to be fired. Is there a deadline you have set in your mind? P.S. Please consider having Uni as a panel member. He's talking about uh, Xbox University or Xbox Sensei off uh, Twitter. At this point, we're, we're happy with just us two. Um, what, do you, uh, what would it take for us to come out and say, Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, Sarah Bonnie, and Greenberg to be fired? They would have to bomb Starfield, Fable, um, another avowed like the big big ones would have to be bombs like i think matt booty is the biggest corporate right now that might need to be looked at but he isn't i'm still not to the point where i feel like he needs to be replaced uh you know redfall everyone wanted to lay the uh ha have him lay on the sword that you know that that's more on like the bethesda side like todd howard pete hines it's more on their issue now it's, if fable came out and, and it's horrible if hellblade came out it's horrible state of k3 comes out it's horrible perfect art then i would be like a okay, bad mo uh matt booty needs to go i i i give aaron greenberg a lot of slack when it comes to marketing because here's the thing people want them to market something but smooth, let's be real here let's keep it 100 what the hell is aaron going to market right now um redfall do they want to put more money behind redfall they, they've actually put a decent yeah. marketing budget behind Redfall, actually. And I like I've seen yeah, a lot of marketing for Redfall Red marketing. <laughs> like, it's just like when Starfield comes out and if it's not heavenly marketed, because you're already starting to see the marketing push for Starfield. If Fable comes out and you don't see heavenly marketed towards, then I would start saying, OK, you know, Aaron Greenberg might not necessarily be his fault because he's still got a budget, but he he needs to do a better job at fighting for his budget. But until I start seeing these bigger games, not having marketing pushes, I can't really go too much into my booty. And as far as Phil Spencer, Starfield, that's all it takes for Phil at this point with me. It's like, you know, um, as much as I do think Phil's done a lot for the brand, there is to a point where you're supposed to micromanage all these people or have other people micromanage them and you, they, they address you. And I feel like, you are failing to that degree. Now, Redfall, I don't think it's all end all be all where he needs to go. But I think Starfield is going to be that time where maybe I'm like, maybe not. That's not the, the, the straw on the camel's back. But it is one of those things where it's like, OK, maybe Phil needs someone to do that perspective of his job, because I feel like he's a great executive. He's good at talking. Imagine like how he talks in interview smooth. Imagine him doing that in an executive room. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's really good at talking. So I think he does good job there. It's just, you know, if if he if he has too much on his plate and he can't handle all of the production that's going on with all these games and Matt Booty needs help, then he needs to have someone below him. Maybe poached by uh, from PlayStation that can see these games and see if they're going to be a hit or not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I get it. Um, so I'm going to say this. Phil Spencer is virtually untouchable based off where he's at, right? He's uh, he's at a, a certain position. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's, Maybe he needs help. He's but virtually I don't, untouchable. But the thing is, as far as what he's done smooth, he has done a lot in the executive level. It's just the gaming quality side that needs to be improved. And if mm -hmm. he can't do it, then maybe he needs someone below him. No, no that's the thing. There are people below him. And then that's where I'm going to go. So Matt Booty, believe it or not, he's actually done a good job. If you think about it, he's has fulfilled his division. Now, they haven't released a game since 2021, but in 2021, he was, what, three for three, four for four, whatever, what they, what they did in 2021. Now, the 2023 is Bethesda's year, so that's Pete Hines and their mission. They, they still have their same you know, core that checks in on the games and, and makes sure everybody's hitting quality control. It doesn't just trade off and Matt Booty observes it or somebody from Xbox. It's literally Bethesda. They they still operate off that, so that's I'm not even though Xbox still gets the hit for it because they own them now and they got obviously got to do a better job. But at the end of the day, I don't blame like a, a Matt Booty for uh, Bethesda. Just like when when Microsoft acquires ABK, Matt Booty won't be overseeing that. It'll be whomever currently oversees it unless they step down. But um, now 
as far as Sarah Bond, like I don't really know what Sarah she does. Bond. She she does Game Pass, so she she's doing a good job. She's doing a good job. So my biggest complaint, and I've said it in videos and I've said it in Twitter, has been marketing. Because at the end of the day, at it, you could say Xbox has nothing to market, but there's been times PlayStation had nothing to market and they still was able to market. What did they market? They market their uh, legacy. They market their console. They market the uh, the collection. They, they are of their lacking games. in the marketing department, but I feel like. And I love Phil, it, uh, and it, I love uh, Aaron Greenberg. I think he's I, cool. I feel like they took a hit in the marketing because they want to take that money and put it to good use towards later games like the fables the avowed like now if i start seeing these games not being marketed correctly and good then i will be more on that i just i feel like we've gotten to the point where it's been so long since we've seen very good quality games come from microsoft yeah we forgot how they market games that they believe in you know what i'm saying yeah like, like remember that halo infinite marketing that was yeah. great marketing it was great yeah because they believed in that game yeah, and the marketing we got from Redfall was just—I mean, it was there, right? I mean, I, uh, believe I'm, I'm actually still uh, playing the game. Um, I haven't played in a while, actually. Just oh, to give I you, thought that thing. Man. Just to give everybody a heads up, like I actually I had surgery uh, yesterday, so um, so I'm still like recovering. So I haven't really been being able to do uh, much. I I shouldn't even sit down too long. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but like the last game, like I um. I think the last game I completed was like maybe Ravenlock, um, but I, but I'm trying. I got there's a couple of games I have to uh, uh, get back to, but um, yeah. But they eventually started marketing Redfall to a degree that I expected. You know, the game didn't turn out uh, too great, but it's the Xbox marketing. They they have things to market. They have they have Game Pass. They have um um they have Game Pass. They have the console. Uh, they can get into a marketing partnership with Rogue Ali. That can that's literally a, a, a portable Game Pass th- uh, machine. Um, they have uh, you know games, and they don't market their exclusives that they do with um, independent. Like you know, Ravenlock came out. They had Benedict Fox. Um, uh, they could they could push those to a degree. And now I'm recently seeing you know those Game Pass commercials pop up where they're promoting like Starfield, Hellblade uh minecraft and all that other stuff but it's their marketing could do a better job i think they need to market console they need to market game pass and they need to market end of their individual games like they're the big pillars that are coming out this year they need to have they they should have a market and their marketing budget should be insane that uh, right around the times that these releases are coming out and i think they'll put themselves in better position to sell consoles, to sell games, and to sell Game Pass, and that's been their weakest point. Whether they got games or they don't got games, they haven't been marketing effectively, and that falls under Aaron Greenberg and his team. I I feel like, to me, I just want to see how they roll when they have games to market. You know, if if they're continuously marketing stuff the way they market stuff now, then I would, I'm 100% with you. And, And, you know, to a degree, I agree with you, to a point. I do think even know that they don't have like a whole lot of games to market currently, they could do better in the marketing. But if it's either they're just not caring or I feel like they're holding some of that marketing budget for when these big hits come out. And now, you know, you could argue that they shouldn't have to hold marketing budgets. To, uh, it's a trillion dollar company, but they still have a budget at the end of the day. I got to see more on how they handle that going forward. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see this, uh, the Starfield treatment, that marketing. I mean, that's the next game out, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question comes from uh, Mr. Weapon Will himself, BG. He says, what was the first game you remember that brainwashed you into becoming an Xbox fan? Oh, man. Um, I'll take this question. Um... So I wasn't a fan of Xbox during the OG Xbox days. I was PlayStation and GameCube. I was, I, uh, my gaming taste was very specific during those days. When the 360 came out, um, believe it or not, I had I bought every game. My favorite game during launch had to be either it was Call of it was Call of Duty 2, Perfect Dark Zero, and um, Condemned and Cameo. So I had like there was four games, but those didn't make me an Xbox fan. I just I like those games, but I think the experience of playing on Xbox Live 
made me an Xbox fan. And the game that pulled me in was uh, Years of War uh, 1. When that game first came out, and I think in November of 2006, that was the game that made me a, a, a pure Xbox fan. And then to follow that up the next year, less than a year later, the game was Halo 3. Now, Halo 3 was my first major, you know, Halo game. I've dabbled in Halo 1 by, you know, I played, you know, with a friend back when my friends had um, Xbox. My cousin, I, I played co-op with Halo 2 when they got their Xbox for Christmas back in 2000. Four, um, we played Halo 2 couch co op uh, together, and Halo 3 was my personal Xbox experience. In the amount of hours, the late nights, um, me calling out of work, playing that game, uh, that those were true. It was like Gears and Halo, Gears and Halo. That's pretty much were, were the games that really made me an Xbox fan in, co in a combination with Xbox Live. I think mine is. Fable got me into the Xbox ecosystem, but Halo kept me around. Um, you know, loved Halo. I remember playing Halo 3, doing duos with my cousin Sage. You know, I remember getting the OG um, Xbox with the, the Halo green Xbox, the original one. And I, I got that for Fable, and I got a 360 for Fable 2. So Fable's oh. always got me into the brand. It's just, you know... That's why I'm so like passionate about this next fable because like people have a lot of you know expectations they have with you know the next uh Hellblade. I'm like Microsoft fuck up fable and see how quick I drop you. Yeah, um and, and they, they actually uh fucked up fable a couple of times <laughs> since fable 3 they they had the fable connect game, they had fable legends that. Uh, I, I definitely understand it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they had, you know, you no know, Fable has been, you know, all right, in it, but it is uh, missed. So I'm looking forward towards, uh, I don't know if it's considered a reboot, remake, or the fourth one. I don't know how they're treating. I think it's a reboot. I think it's a reboot. Okay. And I don't even think they know how to talk. All right. So, I mean, that's it for the uh, Patreon questions here at the uh 23 a minute mark we're gonna get to our next topic but if you want to submit patreon questions make sure you go to the patreon um and submit your questions uh the same way you submit your questions for uh you know the weapon will after dark and whatnot so uh it's gonna be uh set up the same way um playstation showcase playstation game showcase now this is playing xbox and I will only be talking about PlayStation as it pertains and as it impacts Xbox. So, Attic, my question to you is, does the PlayStation Showcase, which is surprisingly, you know, May 24th, that's next, that's Wednesday. Um, what impact do you think it will have on the Xbox Game Showcase? Will it, will it put pressure on the Xbox? Because personally, I'm just going to tell you this. I personally think... All these showcases, well, especially PlayStations, but Xbox, even at this point, I think Xbox is already uh, pre-recorded unless they're doing that next week. You might have better um, insight on that than I do. I think it's I think it's already done, too. I think, if anything, this would put pressure on Xbox to, to, to go. Maybe they have some Game Pass announcements that they could announce that week that they didn't initially going to announce that week. I think it could put pressure on them in terms of stuff like that. But I do think that PlayStation's been missing for two week, uh, for two years almost. They're, I would be very surprised that they don't drop serious bombs Wednesday or whenever the hell this event is. Yeah, I would be extremely surprised, and I think it's going to really put a lot of pressure on Microsoft. Oh uh, well, what when you say it puts pressure on uh, Microsoft? What do you think they're gonna do? What would they need to do? Uh, that would apply pressure on Microsoft, essentially. Like, like, what do you think is going to add? That insinuates you think something's going to happen that's going to, like... Like, generally, PlayStation has been going after Xbox, and they've been sort of shutting down things Xbox have done in the past, still in their thunder, um, so to speak. And right now, they're going about two and a half weeks earlier. It, it would just be the perception. They're like, look, you know, they're, they're going to look at that, look what's announced. I don't think they'll change anything drastic to it because I think for the most part it is already 
been edited, but I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if certain things get announced. If, if like, you know how sometimes these companies keep something like really close to the chest that we want the competition knowing about? If something like that gets announced and it catches them off guard, they might make slight changes to the show. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think maybe they had something in the tuck that they were going to show, but they decided not to at the last minute. They might pull that card out. You know, it, it, it just uh, it just depends on how much they're ready to show. You know, maybe they actually have a lot more that they that they can show. They actually have stuff ready to be shown, but they might hold on to that for like another event. Maybe they bring XO back at the end of the year. Like I said, maybe they have Game Pass deals that are that are already done that they haven't announced. It's yeah. not going to be at the show, and then they just shadow drop them this that week. I I think um so X with be, between Xbox and like but they because they 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 own essentially QuakeCon now right um they get that's in August um they've been showing up to go game show I I don't even think XO was really you no know, necessary especially if they flush out these uh, releases but let's so PlayStation I think is going to have. A decent showcase. I said they need. I'm expecting a lot because to make up for lost time. A lot of people took that tweet personal. Um, and when I was, they, they thought I was saying like PlayStation, PlayStation hasn't released games or anything like that. But I'm like, no, they haven't had the showcase in about two years. So yeah, I expect the showcase to be big time. They said the showcase is what just over an hour. So uh, um, nah, I think this is just an hour or so. Just so. Is 90, yeah. Uh, 90. So we know for one thing's for sure. We know Spider Man is going to be there because that, that's the game that from their first party that's only releasing this year, right? So you got Spider Man. I expect Spider Man to show up great. It's going to look good. It's going to have a release date, you know, in the same week of Starfield, um, if not the same um, day. But Starfield releases on a Wednesday, so I think Spider Man releases that Friday. Maybe they don't. They don't know. Maybe they release it a week before. Maybe a full week after. Um, but I think uh, Sp- Spider Man is going to show up in a big way. I'm not sure how long of a demo. Um, I think the game with Stellar Blade is going to uh, be there. That's the other, you know, third party exclusive. S- Final Fantasy you think release dates could change depending on what they say. Star, uh, depending on what they say, Spider Man is like obviously not Starfield, mm-hmm. but maybe they have other games like such as like maybe hellblade 2 coming out um uh, no those days could potentially get changed i don't think you know because i think hellblade is already like in october november release because you go but that's later in the topic um but uh i think place i think um so i think the headline is going to be spider-man final fantasy we're going to get a healthy dose of final fantasy we've seen it enough already but they're, they're not they're going to keep showing it to us square enix might show off another game maybe they may tease the other final fantasy 7 uh game uh, we know PlayStation is, in, is the rumor with that Konami deal that they're doing. So the you know the new Metal Gear, everybody's gonna get tricked out with the that. I think that's probably the biggest bombshell is the Metal Gear. I think three remake, the, the Silent Hill, um, maybe another Castlevania game. Just depending on how they do it. We know PlayStation likes to pull like these random exclusives out. Maybe GTA Six shows up on their on their uh, floor. Um, there's but it's like i said it's less than an hour and but we we can't forget a lot of the stuff stuff in an hour though a lot of stuff they're going to be showing though is vr i'm not a vr person so i don't care they said there will be some but it's a product that came out this year you gotta they can do a montage but it came out this year the vr came out in what february okay hold on hold on okay out of out of the hour how -hmm. long do you think they would spend on vr all right, if this show is an hour and seven minutes, I think 32 minutes of it is VR related content. That's you're bugging smooth. I would say 10 minutes tops. 10 minutes. All right, tops. okay, okay, all right. So, um, remember, so I'm I don't know what I, I mean, I can't allow myself to be surprised by anything PlayStation uh does or acquires. So I mean, we, 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 we'll, we'll report back and see. Yeah, we'll see. But I think I think I think a healthy dose of it is going to be 
uh, VR related, and uh, Spider Man and Final Fantasy is going to be the headline. Still, Stellar Blade may show up. Remember, uh, is Capcom bringing back Pragmata? That was a lot that like maybe Pragmata returns. Um, Let me ask you a question Do you think that a healthy dose uh, of you thinks or it's going to be there, or do you want it to be? There? I don't care. I, mean, I would, uh, the I thing feel is, like part of you wants that to be the majority of well, the VR and go on Twitter and oh. talk your smack. Like, no, that, the thing is, it's, I think regardless of what they do, I think them going first is, is, is interesting. They're going to have some knockouts, but I think Xbox is in better position. So, I PlayStation always puts pressure on Xbox, but I think you know Xbox is going to have theoretically a longer show by a whole additional hour. You got ninety minutes for the game showcase, and then you got a thirty minutes of Starfield after that, right? So it's Xbox has a lot of content, and PlayStation, even though PlayStation is really shicey with their marketing, a lot of their third party stuff that they do show in this showcase is going to show up on an Xbox pre order page by the end of the show. So. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to that, but you know they do these showcases very well. Games show and present greatly at PlayStation showcases. Um, I do think it puts pressure on Xbox. I just don't think it's going to be anything that changes where you have to go back and cut something or add something. I think you know they're pretty confident. Where it's 2023, remember, at 2020 and 2021, we saw all those games. Something has to be ready or close to ready um but i think this uh, show I, I'm, I'm happy that they're going first um i i really am happy that they're going first and we'll see how you know it'll play out yeah i think it's just at the end of the day man it's just gonna see what happens um i think that microsoft's definitely gonna be looking at this with like a magnifying glass because they, they, they're a little scared. I would say Microsoft knows something that's going on there. Konami. But let's be real here. Like, the 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 worst thing that can happen is, like, they got, like, something bigger than we think. Like, a GTA 6 ex mm. type exclusivity or something. Like Yeah, I don't that, think GTA is exclusive to PlayStation. Matter of fact, yo, the 2K CEO, he's pretty close to um, Xbox leadership, man. I don't think, I don't even think Phil Spencer and would let that happen, bro. They open it. If you anything, they got marketing. You could be as close as you want, but if you got that money, it don't You matter. think PlayStation has GTA 6 exclusivity money? Yes, they do. It, it just... You here's think? the thing. People think that, like, PlayStation can't buy shit. PlayStation can buy shit. Can they convince a board room to buy shit? That's the question. That's not easy. Expect Like, my, the reason Microsoft's able to take more risks like that is because they have that type of extra revenue just laying around that they can they can make those type of changes that they want to but playstation they got that kind of money but they actually have to like really go above and beyond to explain why they need to spend that kind of money you know what i'm saying how much you think it uh it'll cost for time to exclusive if xbox wanted to buy they wanted to make a splash and buy gta 6 time exclusivity for a year, six months to a year, how much do you think that would cost? I think it depends on how long it would be. I, I think that six it, months probably like two hundred million. Two hundred like easy. Two hundred million. Just six months. Would you Just do would you, would you do that if you're Xbox? It depends on if they are confident in the games they have. If they're confident in the games they have, yes, I would. Do Matter of fact, would I you would you would, would you game pass GTA? Or how much you think that would cost? Six um, months, not even time exclusive. Six months, Game Pass. Day one, though. I see. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about stuff like this, so I can't really. Because because like, this is how I treat it. I would look at it, right? You look at how much they spend on like publisher acquisitions, studio acquisitions. How much does a game acquisition cost? How much will you value that? It, it, you got to think it's, it's obviously it's going to be cheaper. Like if, you know, PlayStation spent $3 billion on Bungie. To me, if GTA is a possibility to get GTA and Game Pass, I would be, if I'm Microsoft, it, I would be willing to pay anywhere up for us to, you know, $500 million to $1 billion to get a, a GTA either as a A, time exclusive or day one um, Game Pass. I don't. Do you think that's a, a worthwhile if it, investment? If it's six months, 
then they could probably spend about 500 million. So I don't know how much stuff like that costs generally. You got to ask them how much GTA makes in 90 days, right? How much does GTA make in 90 days? Can Microsoft clear that with a premium? You and your premium is 50%, right? It's that plus, an it's pretty much, all right, I got to clear what you will make and then I got to put a, pretty much put a bonus of that. I'm going to put 50% on that. I think it would be they worth can, it. They can make it, but here's the thing. It just depends on if they have faith in Hellblade 2 and all these other games that's coming out. If they got faith in those games, they don't need the GTA. I mean, GTA is like next year, though. Like, like I think that's next year. So well, it might be. we don't know. But all you need all is I'm one big third party partnership. The biggest ex the third party partnership Xbox got this year is Diablo. I hear you, but I think at the end of the day, I think Microsoft could definitely afford it. I don't know if they would do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah, that's true. It, it, it's just one of those things that like, is it worth the investment to us? It might be, but realistically, are they going to get people to, to come over to Xbox and, and, and you got to keep in mind, they're not going to, there's no realm where they don't let it go to PC. And, and most of the time GTA doesn't come out on PC day one anyway, mm -hmm. but there's a realm where it does, where, you know, they're taking it serious. If it's on PC day one, it's not worth it because I feel like a lot of the PlayStation people, the BGs, they would just buy it on PC. Uh, but then are they take, or do they really even care about PC uh, console sales? I think they do to a point, but I don't think it's their their, their focus. They 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 look at that as like a pillar to get to their services. I don't know if they're willing to invest that kind of money to get people to buy a console. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Um. It's not getting people to buy a console. It's getting people in, into Game Pass. So if there's multiple ways into Game Pass. So that's the whole point, because whatever they do to get people in the Game Pass will eventually benefit the console or, and vice versa. You, you get people to, be, to buy the console, you get people into Game Pass. If you get people into Game Pass, depending on how they see it, they're like, oh, this game's in Game Pass. Uh, what do I need to get in Game Pass? Either Xbox.com slash play or you buy an Xbox Series S or you buy a Series X. Well, uh, I think um, I think it's, I feel like decisions like that. You don't got to pay for a Call of Duty deal no more, right? Like you don't got to bid for that no more. You. You fucking own it, right? You don't got a big for that. So it, that, that, like I would, once in a while, you you have to make a splash for something like that. Do something that PlayStation would do. Take something out of uh, PlayStation's pocket. Like, yeah, the worst, thing, the worst thing, the worst thing that could happen, the worst thing that can happen is PlayStation getting exclusivity or timed exclusivity on GTA. I feel like they had some sort of like GTA marketing on the last thing. Oh, no, no, because it's been a while since. I think the GTA 4 was Xbox, actually. GTA 5 was PlayStation and um, I think GTA 6 is up for grabs and, and Phil Spencer and uh, Skolnick, they're very close. They're very close. Um, well, they're close enough to, to take a bag to make something a time to close. And Skolnick, big, they're not, he's not willing to sell 2K or take two to Microsoft because they don't need to, but they're willing to, I'm pretty sure the amount of money that Microsoft would, I can't be saying this, but if I'm Microsoft, the amount of money I be would be willing to pay for Game Pass access to GTA Day One or exclusivity access is is a, is an acquisition to any other anybody else to uh, a, a studio acquisition to anyone anyone else. That's what it would be, and that's hard to turn around because that at the end of the day you make that do you know place it's going to sell whatever it's going to sell on PlayStation if it's on Game Pass and you know on PC, so it's going to still make its money. But you already more than you make up the the way that will look on your financials is gonna, on their financials is going to be crazy because it would make whatever they're going to make for Xbox. Like, all right, so Xbox is pretty much buying these copies up front for us plus uh, plus a, a bonus, and then we we still can sell on Xbox for people who aren't subscribed uh, to Xbox Game Pass. We're still going to be sell. a lot of people that will buy GTA that's not sub. Yeah. There's going to be a lot. A lot of people. people. Yeah. Now. now if they could just get the timed exclusive, but not the Game Pass back. Without now, my thing is, would you do? All right, so would you do an exclusive without being on Game Pass? That's that's the thing you gotta ask yourself if it makes sense. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to be an exclusive without being on Game Pass nowadays. Um, I would still personally do it to sell consoles. If I wanted to sell Xbox consoles, I would do it. 
if my goal is like, you know what, this quarter, we, you know, we gotta, if we wanna sell, we wanna sell another, you know, 5 million, um, you know, Xbox consoles, or this is our goal for Xbox consoles that we wanna sell this year, then yeah, we make this game exclusive. We buy exclusivity for this game and let's see, you know, and bundle it. You know, let's see if it do what it do and you sell a console, then yeah, then you can do that. You buy, you, you do that move to sell Xbox consoles. You buy exclusivity to GTA for about, you know, six months. Um, it'll hurt, it'll hurt. Now that, that, that'll be more uh, expensive. That's why the Game Pass one is better because it allows the publisher to eat regardless. Um, but you buy the, um, you know, but for Xbox, you spend whatever to get the exclusivity sell the xbox consoles i think and then then matter of fact put like a, a back end deal the minute the exclusivity you know ends on xbox you pay for game pass um at, it get added in a game pass six months later once the game is now multiplied that that would be the smartest thing anybody could do if they were smart that's why you need people like me working in the marketing department for xbox give me a blank check and I'll get a proposal like, hey, what is it? What did it take to get? Because I got a goal to sell. I need to sell Xbox consoles. I think I believe your game can sell Xbox consoles. Six so, months exclusivity. What would you say to the people that's like, but smooth? I prefer them invest in their own products. They already have. It, once you own act, once you once they own ABK, that's you got ABK, Zenimax, and then the the twenty seven whatever how many studios they had before it was Zenimax. They have all those studios. I mean, there's there's money to go around. They they got money waiting on boats, and yeah, there's money to go around. They'll be okay. Like, um, but you do that because you make a deal like that because you make a deal like that that benefits Xbox, and it also benefits their first party. Remember, Call of Duty's been feeding PlayStation first party for the last 10 years, according to Sony. So I hear you. And I think they could, if they bought Activision, just the money that PlayStation gives them every year for Call of Duty would pay for would pay for the call uh, for the GTA deal. The problem I think I, I'm sitting on is like as much as I would like for them to do something like that, at the same time, I would like for them to invest into their own stuff. Now I'm okay with them doing timed exclusives. And I do think that if there was a, a possibility of getting GTA, do the GTA. But yeah. at the same time, if that came if that came at the cost of like investing into an IP, mm -hmm. I would prefer them to actually invest into an IP over spend a billion dollars on GTA five. Now, obviously, if they can do it and they feel like it makes sense, I'm not going to complain. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would prefer them to, you know, buy another studio or, or invest into a... Because at that kind of money, you can invest into an entire franchise. Like, I, I actually think since they got these mini studios, they need to go and start buying popular kind of like dead IPs, like the Mercenary franchise, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh uh, what's that uh the the ice the what was that ea game planet something uh what do you mean ea the ice, the ice the ice game that was like hold up let, keep talking and i'll look it up it was like planet the, something. Uh, um when you say planet i'm thinking of lost planet um but lost, yeah yeah lost that's planet. capcom Okay, well, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like small IPs like that. Buy the um, buy the the Tenchu, the Tenchu brand. I, I think that you know they got studios and they got some very you know talented studios. I think mm -hmm. giving them IPs that are known, maybe not popular, but are known, and reimagining those games could really go a long way for them. Um, I think Xbox need pop culture. They missed out on Harry Potter. They missed out on Spider-Man. They missed out on the X-Men. Uh, right now, it's questionable if they got Indiana Jones. The movie's not doing too good. Um, but uh, GTA is the, the next best thing. But I hear you. We should, we should see. I think they got dabble in um, some pop culture. They got to align themselves with something that's also popular. Um, you know, so and PlayStation does that a lot. And I expect that to continue. Um, I expect that to continue with the showcase. I'm pretty sure there's some going to be some major tie-in or character that they get that 
we're going to be asking why didn't Xbox do this? Um, Attic, uh, we're what 45 minutes in. Destin Legary, you know, Ryan McCaffrey, IGN, a lot of these people have been trending on Twitter, and it all storms from this, this question. Is there too much pressure on Starfield right now? Um, yes, I, I think there is a lot of pressure on Starfield, and I think Microsoft generated all of that pressure. I think they... Now, wait, how do you... I a question for you right there, right there. You said Microsoft generated that pressure. Did Microsoft generate that inadvertently? Generate that pressure by failing or purposely? Yeah, by by failing. By failing. Because okay. People, people have expectations on the. It's like the last man standing. Okay, mm -hmm. like our top fighters right now that we know of. Obviously, there's stuff like Fable, but people are looking at the here and now. The games are coming out soon. Yeah. You know, Redfall got knocked out. You know, uh, Minecraft Legends got knocked out. You know, obviously some people like Minecraft Legends. I wasn't a big fan of it. But they're mm -hmm. looking at someone like Starfield like, that dude got to knock someone out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, Absolutely. that dude can't get knocked out in the first round. Yeah. And I think that is what they put on it. Yeah. Um, the, thing about Star the thing about it is that, yes, I think Starfield had pressure regardless right even as just as the bethesda game like this this year we're not getting a, a fallout 5 this year we're not getting the elder scrolls this year because they're making starfield right so it has those expectations it has to be good and it has to even be even better because it's an exclusive now um do i think yeah if it scores a, a I, I think i'm gonna tell you this if Starfield scores a 91 or better, you know, as long as it's within the 90 to 94 range, if it scores that, it's winning game of the year. I'm sorry. I don't care what Zelda scored. It's winning game of the year because people should be Zelda fatigued, right? Um, and sequel... You on that, but Zelda's good. Zelda's good, but it's the same. Isn't it the same game? It's the same game, but it's it's the better version of it. And I get what you're saying, people. People want new stuff, but at the same time, Starfield is going to have to really show up to to beat Zelda. Like, it, it, I think it, it, there's a chance it can, because I do think the only thing that can mess with Zelda is a game like Starfield, like an RPG, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, game that gives you a lot of choice. But at the end of the day, it's a new IP. People are going to go into it with a magnifying glass because it's a new IP. Because mm -hmm. it's the game that follows Fallout seventy six. Yep. Which you no, know, they didn't make Fallout seventy six, but they still get the blame for it. And it's the first big, big game that comes out after the Microsoft acquisition. Even though that this game was probably going to be in the condition it is, or the condition it's not, with or without Microsoft. You know, we've always made fun of the fact that if Starfield comes out and it's fucking fantastic. Oh, that was without play. That's without that. That's a Bethesda game. But if it comes out in this dog shit, that's an Xbox game. Like, yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely uh, absolutely true. Um, I think I think Starfield being even if it scores, I think it's I think realistically, right, an eighty seven to eighty nine is probably still game of the year worthy and it's probably a really 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 good game right um it, it, it's crazy how much weight you know metacritic comes out hold on hold on yeah it's just i, I feel what you're we saying when it comes to metacritic metacritic is like one of those important things that's not important at the same time you look at metacritic and you i, I look at it as like a guide smooth i look at it as like okay do i want to play this game Am I interested in this game? I look at what the industry is rating this game, and then I go from there. Yeah, I think um, it the whole thing the the whole eleven out of ten thing. See, I don't. That's the, that's the issue I have with them. Yeah, is saying eleven out of ten is a ballsy move. That that means you don't eat, you don't think it only needs to be perfect. It needs to surpass perfection. Yeah, need to and ushering it, a whole new way of gaming, bro. Like, yeah, and let, let's be real. Even a Starfield bombs, 
and I and I'm not saying I'm not putting that into existence. Even a Starfield bombs, Microsoft gonna get clown. People are probably gonna roll heads. But whenever they start releasing good games, if they start releasing games, let's say Starfield bombs, but Hellblade and Avowed is captivating, doing all these numbers. Everyone loves them. People are going to still clown Starfield, but it's going to start to level out. Now, I'm not saying that Starfield coming out and being bombed, there's no consequences. There's going to be consequences. Yeah. But people keep forgetting that it doesn't matter what you did 10 years ago, what you did six months ago. You start delivering good games, people are going to start forgiving you real fucking quick in the game yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, you know, it. I talked about this before. I felt like, obviously, with Xbox, you know, Bethesda's been, honestly, uh, been a great acquisition. And they've been carrying Xbox, you know, this year. You know, Hi-Fi Rush doing what it did uh, with the score. Really good game. I think Ghostwire Tokyo caught second life and more people appreciated it this time around. Now that it finally released on Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. I think it even scored, like, 10 points higher on Xbox because people had time to appreciate it. Um... Redfall comes out and that, you know, obviously it's, it's just a bad sign because it's a new IP, it's the Xbox exclusive under Bethesda and it bombs. It, it, it bombs very bad. And, you know, what should have happened, what I expected to happen with Redfall, I thought it would be the death loop effect. I figured, you know, it'll be one of those games that, yeah, people are looking forward to it, but it will score above expectations. It'll be above expectations like, wow, this is a really good game. This will nominate for game of the year and that would take pressure off starfield and then they're able to hit you with like a double whammy like redfall is pretty good and starfield's amazing right but because and i remember saying this i think we might have been in the podcast i said bro if redfall is bad or if it's not like good then it turns starfield to it has to save all but if redfall does this if it's redfall surprises in a good way then starfield is pretty safe right so um i think yeah there's too much pressure on starfield uh due to xbox failures um there's too much pressure on starfield due to pundits media everybody uh talking about it and that we're putting that all on like starfield um starfield needs to be a great game it needs to be polished um and it needs to you know what i mean it's I mean, what was like? Can it can it be equivalent to a Fallout Four? No, is that a failure? Kind of, it's got a hit. Okay, let, let let's do this. What do you think in terms of Starfield, where that Metacritic hits before it's deemed a success in your eyes? Like, how high does that number got to be for for it to be a success? It just has to be a ninety. In your eyes, in my eyes, so you it just think, has to be a ninety. Nine nineties. You acting like that's such an easy thing. So you think it's got to be a ninety before it gets like that? that Where I think right? everybody would be like, okay, if it hits that nine, it's a must play. It's ninety, whether it be ninety, ninety one, ninety two. If it's if it's in that vicinity, it's safe. I'm not expecting it to do Zelda fake review numbers ninety seven or like ninety five, ninety six, whatever. I'm not expecting that. But if it does that, then great. What I'm thinking is if they can just keep if they can, if if this game is good enough and it scores a night. The thing about these games is that they're not like for everyone, and that's the thing. And I, and then we still don't know. Maybe we find out everything we need to know. You know, next week. I don't know when. Not next week. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, and maybe when the previews come out, and we'll see what's what. But I think the universal acceptance where everybody would think like, all right, this is a success. This is great. And it's going to be a, a, a runner up for or a nominee for a game of the year is a 90 or better, 9 0 or better. I think once the game is in the 89, 88, 87, even though that's really good because the expectation and the pressure that's on the game, that would be deemed a failure because Halo Infinite was an 87. You know, um, what else was uh, like? There's an 80, 80s game, hot B plus games come out every week. Right. So it wouldn't spread it too far from the pack, even though it would be um, one of the best games that come does have come out of Bethesda Game Studios in the half decade uh, or actually more than a decade or so. Um, 
it, it overall it won't be overwhelmingly great if the game scored in 89 or below it, it like even though like it, i think the the i think even though 89 to 85 is a a good score it won't be gaudy score and the game won't be respected and anything below an 85 um at that point uh, 84 is just is like a, it's like a c even though realistically is it still a b minus b it, it will be a like, c to the gamers you're putting like you're putting like the energy in like a god of war you know god of yeah. war gets an 85 doesn't make it a bad game yeah. but that's the kind of caliber where an 84 is not acceptable yeah absolutely so i would say anything below an 88 to me is a failure so you're 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 pretty much saying 88 and up is you're good because there's a lot of reasons why this game would go below a 90 mm -hmm. and i don't know if this game will have one of those issues but like to me it's 88 and above i think anything below an 88 and the, the other two points is me giving a little leeway because i know you know there might be certain things that they envision because it's a new ip i'm hoping it's a 90 plus we're about to find out i've heard good things about starfield uh but you know it's, it's going to be interesting how it works yeah okay uh we are 56 minutes in we got the more updates on this uh, xbox abk deal a lot of people thought the deal was dead uh after cma moved to block it um after they uh pretty much updated their concerns regarding cloud gaming everything was dead in the water xbox said they would appeal um but since then you know other parties have uh approved um microsoft i believe just won the gamers lawsuit and the judge won't give them an, an injunction so they're in a position really they just won a u.s case about this deal the ftc is supposed to be bringing them to court in august the european union the ec european commission approved the deal with a, a cloud remedy which they'll uh, they'll issue worldwide uh, but we know the J japan ftc approved the deal no conditions chinese uh regulators uh, the china regulation committee whatever approved the deal no um uh conditions in the the iraqi regulation whatever they just approved the deal no conditions and uh south africa the recommendation was to approval they get the final hearing in june argentina is it argentina or whatever um new zealand is due june 9th um and so far that puts it at 39 countries approving this deal with two uh moving to block the deal cma moving to block the deal ftc can't block the deal they can only sue to block the deal that means they actually have to win um good thing the united states of america don't give independent regulators that much power to make stupid decisions for your uh country like uh like the united kingdom has um and that's why they're they're pressing the cma right now because they're fuck they're fucking shit up for them over there and they're gonna have to disassemble that whole thing because they're working roguely um so with that being said um i kind of took my mind off the whole abk deal for a while but now that these these updates are coming i'm gonna throw out something very strangely right a lot of people are saying 2024 a lot of people are saying oh they got a window of this appeal i'm gonna tell you right now attic i think this deal gets closed as early as monday they close the deal who are you talking to <laughs> i'm talking yeah, to i agree yeah i think they i think they on monday may 22nd they say fuck the ftc fuck the cma we'll we'll do whatever we got to do but we're closing the deal because if they close the deal right it's not like just the ftc has to bring have to pretty much push up the court date and get it past not even their court they have to go to now a court that's not inside the the ftc court they have to go to a u.s court who's already pressing the ftc and, and i think that's exactly what microsoft wants the, the, i think they they want to take on the ftc in their own way they, they don't want to take them in their own home court mm -hmm. um, you know it, clearly we don't know what's going on but you know the 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 energy I'm giving is they 
they're pretty close to just closing it. Yeah, I feel like the, 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 the EU was a big, and, they, and the thing is, in the CMA, like I said, they're already getting pressure and the, the appeal process and all that stuff got to come. So my thing is, if they do that, great. This is the move I want them uh, to make. The only thing that keeps it open, I was like, all right, will they wait for South Africa, South, South Africa and um, New Zealand, which is like their first week of June, they could wait until then and see how those play out and then and then do it and they'll still be within their Unless closing deadline. Fact, those are going through. Unless, Unless they know for a fact they, those are going through, they could probably slide some dollars over there. Like, yo, just please. Like yeah. Um, but I think May 22nd, because remember, they were like that May 22nd date was that game. Now that they won that gamers lawsuit or they're not getting the injunction, right? They can literally go and just move to close the deal, make the FCC hurry up and scramble, do whatever they got to do, even though it's proven. It's not proven, but it, there's clear that there's been some collusion between the FTC and the CMA. The like trying to which is damn near illegal for them to do. And they're both are being rightfully pressed for that. And I think it would be uh, right for both governments to step in. The United States government like I mean, this is if people hate when I do this, but if this was Trump's administration, this would not be a problem. The deal would have been closed already. Um, it, like the, that whole like, but the United States government will you know there. The courts would do what it's supposed to do. Step in and, you know, deny the FTC. Uh, they'll lose that case. Um, I feel like the uh, the CMA, they'll lose their pills, their whole pills process. Just the implementation in the CMA is going to be delayed because they just won't operate there until that appeal process is over. Everywhere else, this thing is going is going live. They're closing Monday. Book it, and that's the only good news. Uh, I, like that would be for me because the Lakers are getting smacked by the Nuggets for the, during the playoffs, and so I need some good news. And maybe Microsoft closing this deal on May twenty second is that good news I can get. All right. Um, any thoughts on uh, any other thoughts uh, in regards to the ABK deal? No, nah, I just wanted it to be over with. Yeah, same here. Uh, regardless if it's passed or not this week or next week or next year. I hope they just neither announce that next week that it's passed or they're going to announce next week that they dropping it. Like, Because uh, I'm just tired of talking about it, man. Yeah. You know, IOP, we do as much as we can not to talk about it. Yeah. It just it feels it feels crazy sometimes. All right, so here we are. Xbox Game Showcase, June eleventh. Predictions, man. I haven't done a video on this. Like predictions, I kind of gave like thoughts, but I heard rumors. Uh, people are talking about rumors, things that are going to supposed to be showing up. Um, I, you know, we, we you know what we could do. What can Let's we do? Keep the, the predictions for another one. Let's just do our wants with our wants okay we, yeah our wants we'll do our wants now and all right so let me look at the, the calendar right quick it comes out we'll do a, a an actual our prediction let me let me look at the calendar right so okay so maybe on our the first week of uh june we can do our predictions um and then uh, I, I leave for la on the 7th so we'll be well june 3rd we could do okay june 3rd um all right i forgot you're gonna be there live all right yeah i'm going there that's awesome that's awesome yeah so G yeah june 3rd we can do that so i'll tell you what i uh want to be there um i want them to bring back dead rise into a, some capacity whether it be dead rising five or a remake of dead rising one on a re engine and is exclusive to xbox and it's a day one game pass title um and that's you know the xbox and dead rising are synonymous um with each other it launched it was an exclusive it was a timed exclusive the first game was a timed exclusive for the 360 in 2000 i think six and you know the second one was multi-plat third one was a launch title for the xbox one and the fourth one was a timed exclusive uh for the xbox uh one in 2016. full circle i i, I associate dead rising with xbox i don't care what games appeared on playstation there's a lot of people yeah but dead rising 5 or dead rising 1 remake on re engine 
exclusive to Xbox, Xbox Game Pass day one? I think they're going to, I I would like that, you know, my hope would be Mist Walker, you know, a Lost Odyssey remake, something relative to that. I, I know that's not realistic these days. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Uh, you know, I would really like to see more of that type of energy come from them, especially working more on you know JRPGs. I feel mm-hmm. like they, they, if they, if if Square Enix isn't going to play nice with your game, then sometimes you have to, you have to, you have to make your own games, and, and you know that's that's the kind of thing I would want from them. Uh, but I, I get it. We'll have to see. I think that. I'd like to see a Fable uh, in, you know, we might see Fable there. It's hard to tell. I think Fable has had plenty of time to show us something of the game. Uh, it just depends on what's actually available to show. I don't want them showing Fable just because they feel like they have to show Fable. I want them to show Fable because they want to show Fable and it's ready to be shown. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, I want Fable. If you're going to show Fable, I, I I want you to show it showable. That means it's, you're showing it because you feel... You have something promising to show for it, so um, I would like definitely want them to show a, a fable for sure. But I also want to see Perfect Dark. I want to see what the initiative has done. I want to know what Crystal Dynamics and the initiative has cooked up together, and if they committed to the first person aspect to the game, or did they turn this into their own Tomb Raider? I know Tomb Raider is still coming out under Embrace the Group. Just give me a heads up. Tomb Raider Under Embrace is going to be a budget game. So I don't have too much faith um, in it, even though I trust Crystal Dynamics. They're under Embracer Group. They are a double A publisher. Um, I am. I just want to see Perfect Art. Right, we need an update. It's they uh, built the initiative in what, 2018. They had playable versions of the game. They revealed the game in, was it 2020 or 2021? Uh, one of the game awards. I think it was 2021. They revealed the game. But they also had a lot of employee turnover. Um, and not sure how that has impacted the development of the game. It's supposed to be running on Unreal Engine 5. Um, I would love to see uh, Perfect Dark um, in some capacity um, beyond concept. Yeah, I think uh, that's what we're going to see. I, I truly do believe that they're going to have a good show. You know, I think at this point, it's not even if they're going to, they better. You know, we, we've we waited long enough. It's time to show up or it's time to show up or go home. Like, it really is. It's time to show up or go home. Uh, because guess what, Microsoft? Like, no one is caring about your excuses anymore. No one is. No, nah, they got to they gotta come big. You know, I want... Um, no, obviously, Forza need to hurry up and get this release date. This is, th- I- I'm still upset with them over that whole 12 months thing. We know they're not doing that again because that was a big mistake last time. They couldn't stick to it, even though, believe it or not, a lot of the games that were shown have actually released within that time, by the way. Um, with the exception of, um, obviously, Starfield and the ones that people, actually, uh, the, people like. actually care about, yeah. So, um, but you know. I think uh, I want to see um, I want to see what the Matt Booty Studios, you know, they were though they were acquired first. They've had time to cook. You know, Compulsion's been quiet for a long time. I know they just hired a new community manager, um, so maybe they're preparing. I don't know, or they're looking. I'm, unless they're still hiring, I'm not sure if they fulfilled that role. Um, I think I would like to see they were there a while ago. They confirmed a fallout for next gen version. I mean, that's actually supposed to be coming out in like June. Is that like a stealth drop? I would love to see for that to happen. Like uh, we get like a native 4K 60 um, next gen update to fallout for, you know, that drops on June 11th. Right. I think they their biggest thing is they they just need to give people hope again yeah i think that's the biggest thing like look like even though that i do think that they're they're a little scummy for releasing redfall in the condition it was i don't i think redfall was doomed from the start um you know they were just getting that out there to get that out there doesn't make it right but sometimes that's just it's how the cookie crumbles ain't nothing you can really do about it yeah uh, but at this point 
because they were willing to take that that um that risk on just releasing Redfall, they 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 got they got choices to make now, and it's like you're gonna have to you know really improve the overall aspect of, of your brand because your brand's not looking good right now. It's just not. Yeah, um, I'm there. I'm I'm there with you. Um, they're they're like I said, their first part. They have to. The thing is, I want them. They gotta finish this year strong, man. And um, like I said, I want to see them finish this year strong. Yeah, I'm gonna be excited for things that's coming out in 2024 and 2025. But the thing is, I'm more so interested in what I can play in the immediate future. And just the uh, the first half of the year started off slow. Um, outside of High Five Rush, you, you know, you, you know that started off fast. We know they're in the year with you know the Age of Empires four console version, um, Forza, Star uh, Starfield is supposed to be coming out in September. I want them to double down on that date. Do you think Star uh, Starfield pre-orders go live uh, June eleven? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and you know the question is, do you think Hellblade comes out this year? I think Hellblade comes out this year. I think that yeah, would be the, it would be very big for it because I think that's a game, right? That could critically still Starfield's Thunder or make up if it happens to not hit where we think it should hit. You know what I mean? If Starfield's like an 87, I think Hellblade, there's nothing stopping Hellblade from being a 90. If now and the best new the best possible thing that can happen, their final three games of the year, and assuming Hellblade comes out this year, um Starfield Force of Hellblade, um they all hit nineties or like the high eighties. High eighties, early nineties. If you if Starfield and Hellblade both score ninety um, the only thing that needs that my concern for Hellblade is they're already going to release it before the God eat that deadline. If that happens, Xbox is in, in good position. And then what happens? You know, this is since we're already doing theoretical shit. Mm -hmm. What happens if you, we get to a, a section where we're seeing Starfield, uh, Starfield do good, Hellblade do good, and then on top of all that, um. A valve is doing good, so yeah, I think. Yeah, well, if Val, do you think a valve comes this year? I think it comes March something next year. Uh, first quarter next year, you think uh, about yeah? All right, no, that would be I. I would accept that. I I, I would accept. And, and I think table is twenty twenty five, first quarter twenty twenty five. All right, see, that's too far off for me. I don't know. Uh, well, we're just talking about the perception. Yeah, no, but what, you know, that would make what would make me feel good regarding the showcase or a showcase. What they tell me, obviously, like obviously, Starfield, um, Forza, Hellblade, Age of Empires four. And Stalker 2, you know, are closing out the year. This is the, 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 the AAA games that are closing out the year that are expected to score fairly high. They close out the year, and we can literally count month by month. Each month, one of those games are going to be releasing, right? Um, and the other first-party games, whether it's State of the K3, because at this point, I want to know what's coming out. Obviously, what's finishing the year off, we're starting a year off, and what's your big game for next year? Um, the what's the going to be the biggest game for next year? Um, if you're saying Fable is uh, is next uh, is potential twenty twenty five, what's the big game for next year? Is it Gears? Is it Gears of War? Like uh, they that's what I want. I want to be like at this point. There should be in a situation where they can say, "All right, looking at you know we got twenty twenty three." And we got 2024 because obviously the once we get through the summer, the your next batch of games ain't coming out until like the fall. Um, and then, you know, we have to filter out the next uh, the early part of next year, because now are you going to be able to fulfill those quarterly releases? If you were able to if you see that you can fill those quarterly releases then that that means some of these games that we should be seeing at this show that are expected 
Q1, Q2 for next year should have release windows at the end of them, like fall 2024 or spring 2024, summer 2024, something like that on those games. So I'm expecting a lot at this point. Like, like, and the thing is, it's like they, they got so many studios like I want to see now. I'm like at this point, I'm like, all right, it's 2023. The Gears of War, technically, Gears Five came out in 2019. 2019, and, and I know it's it's a lot to be like. All right, where's Gears at? But like, it, it's, it's it's time to show. It's time to show. I I know they, uh, Gear, uh, they I don't know if they're going to be doing the Marcus Phoenix collection or something like that. But I feel like if we're doing a Marcus Phoenix collection that could technically come out this year. If it, it, I mean, depending on how long they've been working on it. Yeah, it, it definitely could come out this year. I think it's just, I think we'll, we'll get a lot of that information. It's just at the end of the day, is people going to be okay with whatever they say? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because part of me is just like, thinks that no matter what they say, he's not going to be good to certain people. Mm-hmm. And the other part of me is like, you got to show up, show up or shut up. Like, no one's trying to hear any excuses. People are done with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm looking forward to the showcase. I'm looking forward to PlayStation's uh, showcase to see it, 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 it gives us some sort of like measuring stick and is it kicks off the summers. Or was it the summer's game fest, essentially? Um, so I'm just going to see how they stack up. Uh, I think it's going to uh, it's going to be great. Um, and, I, and like I said, it, Phil Spencer was angry in that kind of funny interview, but he did show signs of like hope and promise uh of what what's to come and he mentioned showcase several times because he, he's obviously satisfied or happy what they're going to be able to show and i'm hoping it resonates with everyone that you know we like it all uh, but most importantly is is how soon can we start to enjoy these things and um this year was supposed to be a big year and um when you consider the releases but like you said before minecraft didn't hit the way it should and it actually i can't say that minecraft is actually popular it's just those games will never not rate huh it's not for us it's not for us they'll they'll never rate where you think they should rate um but you know redfall was like i said was a major letdown and i don't think they should give up on a game i feel like they should work on that game uh the way sea of thieves and one and the way state of K, the state of k dev, devs worked on state of k2 um they owe it they owe it to us this game like i said for me redfall has been hard to play on even on pc i can't even play it on like pc um at, at a consistent like performance so that's the the biggest beef i have with the game despite it being 30 fps so, on xbox but i guess my mindset is when it comes to redfall it's like look unless the devs are really mm-hmm. passionate about fixing that game mm-hmm. just cut it and let, let no, it, it no, no 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 like that you can't That's do that. I, I, I don't well, like because I don't like the fact that they did with Bleeding Edge. I feel like Bleeding Edge had potential, and Ninja Theory just like, all right, it's flopped, so we're just gonna leave it alone. And I'm like, bro, you have potential with this game, dude. Yeah, have- I, I guess to me, I'm just on because I actually like some of their other games, and I'm just like, I want those games. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want these games that they're. Making. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they should have made a multiplayer game. Um, because the thing is, and, and I know they bragged about this being a single player game. It's not a single player game. I can't play this shit by myself. I have to play with somebody like I played literally been playing Redfall with my son. Um, that's the only way I've been able to like uh, play it because uh, I don't think the game's well balanced. The the vampires and uh, the situations you get into is just like it's just better with uh, someone else. And I just don't want them to give up. They got to They got to work on this game. We got to get that 60 FPS update. We got to get uh, balanced and we got to get quality of life improvements and games have improved. Like we just got a major update for Plague's Tale. Requiem, which game always looked phenomenal. Now we get to play that 60 FPS. Um, so games are looking better and they keep going back to these games and, and making them better and, and improving them. And, and I hope that doesn't stop And Xbox. You know, they have they have they have a lot of things to improve and like it will be a bad sign if a first party studio gives up on a game that they said one more thing. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, I hear the one more thing is is devastating. Yeah, it's one of those games where they they shouldn't have really. They, this game should have been canceled. Like if they weren't gonna take it serious, and I get it to a point because at that time canceling games was gonna mm-hmm. look really bad. But it's just like 
I think you did more harm than you did good. Even if you just get the game out to to get some quick mo money, it's like I, I feel like a lot more people because the Redfall, that's that's that kind of elevated the, their issues like a lot. You know the thing is, is I think Redfall. Uh, you, remember the and we might talk about this in the party. But remember there was a time where when Bethesda started digging their hands in multiplayer games and they had every that's when the Fallout 76 came out, the Elder Scrolls Online, the Young Blood, the uh what's the other game they did that was multi um they just started throwing doing all these games that, so they can get games out you know quicker and that more people can play. Um I think Redfall was just like honestly the tail end of that. Um, it's something that this team's been working on, but this arcane studio hasn't made the best games, right? Um, it's the other arcane that really kind of had the promising hits. I think the best game Austin did. Did Austin do uh prey? I don't even like prey, by the way. I don't, I don't like the game. I like the original 2006 prey where you're actually shooting at thick ass aliens, not ink. Yeah. But, um, we're pretty much at the end, you know, of the show. Episode one, Plan Xbox podcast powered by Weapon Wheel Network. Uh, this is officially under the Weapon Wheel Network. Um, make sure you guys join the Patreon. It'll be in the description uh, below. You know, get your questions in. Uh, the show is every Saturday. Uh, goes live on uh, Patreon and every Tuesday it goes live on YouTube uh, on the Weapon Wheel channel. Um, and of course, it will be, you know, saved in a, a Planet Xbox uh, playlist as well. But uh, we want to thank you for uh, tuning in and enjoying this first episode uh, uh, brought to you by Weapon Wheel. Hopefully we'll be doing big things uh, with this uh this new uh, setup that we got, and you know, it, it, it'll turn out better for the podcast, better for the better for the panel, and better for uh, Weapon Will in general. So, uh, Attic, before we get out of here, uh, man, what do you got to say to our audience? And most of them, I mean, they all know you know who you are. You've been on Weapon Will several times, and you've been on After Dark. So, yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at Lord Attic IOP um, this Sunday on. I, I don't know when you release this officially on, on the on on his channel. Uh, it, at least it's Tuesday. Um, not Tuesday. I'm sorry. Not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. Monday. Monday. Okay. My bad. Uh, we're gonna have Jake Sullivan on. Uh, he's the dude that uh redid like XCOM. Oh, really? And stuff like that. So you know, we got him on. He he was the lead on Midnight Suns. Okay. Uh, so it's it's going to be an interesting, little interesting podcast. I'm, I'm very curious to see how it's going to go. Appreciate uh you know everyone for showing up. Uh, definitely hit those questions up, man. And, and keep keep in mind if you're messy, we're going to be messy right back. Yeah, absolutely. It's the Planet Xbox 2.0 powered by Weapon Wheel Podcast. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you guys next week. And uh, keep on. I mean not. Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. Mata here. Peace.